This live martial arts class online, you're gonna discover one of the best martial arts weapons for street fight self-defense, the best weapons for street fight self-defense, the Kali stick, also known as an Arnis or a Screamer stick. So with one stick in each hand, you're gonna have a little bit of room coming out of the very bottom of your hand. Starting your shoulders, I want you to drop it down and then let it go back and swing it up. You're gonna warm up the body properly. Keep your stomach up and in, abs tight. And go through this swinging motion. Start to get the blood flowing into your shoulders, wrists, elbows, into your hands. While you're getting your heart rate up a little bit, so you wanna lean out fast, you wanna come fighting fit. When you talk about self-defense, defending yourself, any kind of martial arts, even if it's not martial arts, it's self-defense, you have to also have some fitness involved. Or you should, you don't have to, but I think you should. This is a fun way to do it. Just swinging down and back, this will also help increase the speed and the power and the hard striking, devastating force of your Kali strikes. Just down and back, and now I want you to split it. And by splitting it, you're going to increase the range of motion in the shoulders, you're gonna get more plasma, more blood in there, you're gonna get stronger, healthier shoulders. If you have any tightness, this loosens them up. But mostly this is, again, this is about getting, getting ready to fight or defend yourself with the collie sticks. That so you can come in, no you don't, you just need more training. All right, don't talk about yourself like that. I have a rule in all my classes. I'm gonna lower the camera just a little bit. If I'm not gonna say it about you, you can't say it about yourself, right? And I know if I start saying how horrible you are at something, it's not gonna make you better. It doesn't, right? I'm gonna say you're moving in the right direction. Keep going, keep doing that, and you'll be really good before you know it. So watch the words coming out of your mouth, even if you're joking. All right, so you're stretching this way, a little bit more vigorously, get that heart rate up, get closer to breaking a sweat, and then twist. You're gonna drop the stick to the front. It's almost, it's this hard, hard strike, right? We're talking about street fight self-defense. He has a knife in his hand. I don't wanna to try to grab the knife, take the knife, block the knife with my hand if I don't have to. If I have no other choice, I have no other choice. But if I have a stick in my hand, he has a knife and I can hit that stick and I can hit that person with the collie stick for self-defense, then I'm gonna do that instead. So doing this twisting motion, this warm-up move, is gonna not just increase your flexibility, but when you go to execute that strike, when you go to strike in self-defense, it's gonna be a lot stronger. So don't skip this step. You're just dropping it to the front, allowing your palm to face the sky. The stick, the tip comes behind your back to the front again. So it goes down to the front and you bend your arm this way, keep it close to your body, it's on the outside, the outside of your head, creates an orbital or a circling motion, circling your head, an outer orbital, just with one hand, put that down and then find it on the other side. So again, you're gonna drop forward, palm up, comes back and forward. So from this side, Again, this is just to get the blood flowing into the joints, keep everything safe from injury, lubricate the joints, but it's also gonna improve your flexibility. Good, I appreciate that. I'm glad if I could be a little bit of assistance that way. Thanks for sharing that with me. That, that's nice for me to hear. Now, do both hands at the same time. So you're just going forward, hello, and then reverse it. You're just gonna get some flexibility, speed, power. And again, the strikes, when you start to fight for self-defense, whether it's a follow-through strike or a strike and you bring it back or two strikes with the same stick coming through. And the nice thing about this, working with the collie sticks, a screamer or niece, is that this also later can become a walking cane because when you hold it like this, it's the same strikes. It can be a, a seeing person, a person who uses the white cane for some of you uh, tell me that you use the white cane to help with your uh, sight 
or get around mobility, if you have some difficulty seeing, you use that cane and you feel like a victim or you feel like more of a, uh, a target because people will see you, right, as being weaker. But now you can use that cane to defend yourself. It has so much force, so much power when you learn how to use it right. So we're warming up the wrists, we're increasing the speed, the flexibility, going forward and back. And we started here. We're gonna put those two motions together. So starting your shoulders, elbows in, spin it and drop it. Spin it in reverse and bring it up. It looks like this from the side, down, back up a little, down and up. As you start to warm up, go a little faster, Pull your stomach up and in, abs tight. If you want to, bring your heels together, toes facing out like a duck. You engage more of your core muscles so when you do defend yourself and fight, you move very, very, very quickly. All right, so we have those basic warm up. One, two, and then we're gonna split it. I'm gonna do one hand first and then the other hand. So do one hand, follow with your other hand, one, two, one, and if you can, when one's down, do them at the same time so they're alternating. This is good for your brain elasticity training. The more flexible you are in your brain because of um, your thinking, the more flexible you are in your body. And the opposite is also true. If you wanna increase flexibility in your thinking, and flexibility and thinking is very important, right? Especially in days like these, when the world has a lot of craziness in it, you need to have more flexible thinking so that you can defend yourself better. Don't get stuck in one direction. Be ready to pivot and move in the right direction, one that supports your life and the lives of the people around you. This helps increase your flexibility in your brain doing them both at the same time, but it's not easy. It looks easy until you do it. It was, it was hard for me when I did it the first time. So I'm speaking about calls right at this time at night, going down, going up, down, up. We do this and then do one hand at a time. This is all a warm up. And then as you are going, getting warmed up, challenge yourself, put one down, one up, and then bring this one, they cross each other in the middle. That's where the spin happens. Anyway, work on that. Let's talk about strikes because this is all about street fight self-defense. You find yourself in a situation where someone is attacking you and they have a weapon, let's say a knife specifically, that if it hits your skin, it's gonna slice you and, and they're slicing at you or maybe it's a stabbing attack. Those are the two most common attacks. They're either slicing at people, slicing, or they get really close and stabbing. Slicing attacks are usually longer. They're a little farther away. The person's running and the stabbing usually comes out of nowhere and they get up really close. In both cases, self-defense, situational, situational awareness, excuse me, situational, paying attention to what's happening around you while it's happening is number one that will help you in every self-defense. I don't care what the style is, whether it's punching, whether you're doing some kind of grappling or if you have a weapon in your hand. You need to practice situational awareness all the time, paying attention to what's happening before you step out the door. You look first here, then you look up, you see what's going on around you. You look across the street, try to see it before it comes, right? And then once you have a situation where you think you need to defend yourself, you happen to have a pair of collie sticks or a scream or knee sticks. I like to carry these and my backpack. And I've never had anybody say, hey, why do you have those weird sticks sticking out of there, right? They just assume, because most people know that I'm a martial artist, I might be going to class or going to teach a class. So I have my sticks in there, you need them, you pull them out, right? I just stuff them back in there. You can put them behind your shirt like uh, one of the Ninja Turtles or something. You stick it back there, you whip them out, and now you have length. The length between me and the knife has just increased. The stick, the hard wood, or you can have a metal stick between me and the knife. So I put the weapon between me and the threat. We're gonna call this the threat. Later, we can make this 
Make that the threat just because I like the way it sounds when you hit it. And then maybe this one. Maybe I have to strike, strike to the ground, strike a little bit lower. I have my shoes on today. I can't pick it up with my toes. Pardon me. Every once in a while, you're going to drop your weapon. Just pick them up. But you have this striking, striking. You have all different levels, all different angles. But now you have the stick. So the third part of that self-defense principle, number one, situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Put the stick between you and the threat. Number three is take a deep breath and ask yourself, what are your targets? If it's the eyes, you have this first basic strike. And this strike comes here at this angle. And see how tight I keep it? I keep it here and I bring it in here. And I want it to come like temple, cheek, clavicle, rib. If it's lower, right through the knee, or maybe it's an animal like a wild uh, dog. By wild, I mean like a vicious dog who's been abused. Maybe it's a pack of animals. And you have, it goes straight down to the bottom. Yes, do it. So you bring it right into the knee, into the mouth of that pit bull that's running around mauling kids and has been poorly abused or poorly taken care of. You get the point. But based on the targets, that was number three. Remember number one, situational awareness, pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, you see a threat, get in a better position. Put the sticks, whatever your weapon is, between you and the threat. You've just increased distance and you have these hard, striking instruments if they've got a knife and you don't have anything it's your skin your flesh your organs your lungs your heart against that knife that's bad you don't want that if you can avoid it this is much much better right we're just talking about what works better than just your hands and if you have no other choice make sure you learn how to fight you're never you're always going to get cut but learn how to fight just a little bit some of the basic principles and if anybody teaches you, you know, you do all this and you take it away and you do this and you do that, or the guy pulls out a gun, he puts it here and then you took it away, and don't fall for all that garbage, right? Learn the basic practical self-defense stuff, situational awareness, better position, how to get out of the way, how to throw a couple punches and move, how to strike them first before they strike you. But we're talking about the Kali stick, a scream of Arnis. Now, I showed you before holding this here. I think someone told me it was a punak. Um... Or maybe I'm thinking of something else. But anyway, but I think this is what it is. I block here, right? I can strip that weapon out of their hand. So this is for stripping. Holding it with some coming out of the bottom is important because you can strip a weapon out of the other person's hand. Holding it here is important because you can jab. That's my favorite part. I might try to strip the weapon if it's somebody who really doesn't know what they're doing and I've already hit them 38 times and they're going down and I just want to see if it works. But mostly, I'm using basic stuff for street fight self-defense. If I'm in the uh, controlled environment and I'm working with somebody and I can trust them and we're doing knife drills, then I'll strip because it's fun and it's cool to learn stuff like that. Street fight self-defense, I'm going to keep it super basic, super real, super practical. I'm talking about striking and blocking if I have to block, right? And then striking and it's just fierce, vicious, all in, full commitment every strike trying to end the fight. And you can do that with this part. So make sure you have a little bit on the bottom. First strike from here to here, that's angle one. I call it angle one, you call it angle one, we'll all call it angle one. You're gonna do angle one, this is your right hand, angle one with your left hand. Angle one is simply from the same side to the opposite side coming through the middle. Now remember this, when you do your strikes, you don't wanna be wide out here. They're not fighting over here, they're not fighting over here, they're coming straight through your middle. So all of your strikes are coming through this midline or the center line. You're gonna fight from behind your sticks. I'm gonna interrupt your ability to see me with these sticks, I interrupt your pattern. Whatever you're thinking in your head, I get these sticks between me and that thought, right? Between me and the threat. So you put the uh, sticks here to start, and then when you strike, all the strikes stay here in the center line. Even if you're going to the ground or, or up, it's always gonna be tight, keep it super tight. Angle one coming here, angle two, just the opposite. Angle one, angle two is opposite side to the same side. So this is a follow through, follow through. That means I'm going all the way through, all the way through. You can also strike and bring it back in. Strike 
and bring it back in like that. But when you do that for self-defense, make sure every strike is trying to end the fight. A lot of times when you practice, and you want to go for that speed, and that's exciting, and it sounds good, right? Then you add all these fancy foot movements and different techniques, and then you start practicing for the look. And the look's no good. When we're talking about street fight self-defense, we're talking about commitment on every single strike to end the fight. Principle number four. Number one, pay attention. Situational awareness. Number two, get in a better position. Put the weapon between you and the threat. Number three, ask yourself with a breath. The breath centers you, by the way. What are my targets? His eyes, nose, targets that you're gonna remove or destroy, right? Remove means your ability to see. If I can remove your ability to see, your ability to breathe, either temporarily or permanently, right? Come straight in. I've just permanently removed your ability to breathe. For street by self-defense, this is not playing around, this isn't just that fun classroom, let's all pull our punches. That's fun, I love to do this. You're gonna love it too. And you start spinning, you go down on your knee, you're on your back, you put on the goggles, you get a pair of uh, machetes, sparks flying everywhere, everybody's like ooh and ah. That's cool, that's fun to watch. But self-defense, you have to switch something in your brain and say look, different set of roles, situational awareness, Better position, targets. What are my targets? What am I gonna remove or destroy? And then number four, you have to have that full commitment on every single strike, trying to end the fight. The only way you can do that is when you practice, and you practice all these different techniques. And the principles are always more important than technique, but you need some techniques, right? When you practice that technique, you practice full in. So at the beginning, you can do this a little bit. You're warming up, you're warming up, but then hard and fast. Hard as you can, as fast as you can, and see what that feels like in your hand so that you don't start losing it, right? When you do this to defend yourself, the last thing you want is to go flying out of your hand. I don't know if you saw it earlier, but I knocked one out of my hand. I actually smashed my thumb. It, it, nothing happened to it. <laughs> It hurt at the time, but I smashed my thumb. But it's not the first time I smashed my thumb. It's not the first time this week I smashed my thumb. Because every once in a while, when you do that, self-defense isn't pretty. It's not supposed to be smooth. It's not supposed to be um, like Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, uh, who are the new guys, Scott Adkins, Michael Jai White. All those guys in the movie are doing stunts. And stunts are fun to watch, it's super cool. A lot of things that you see in martial arts schools are stunts because the instructor and the student have an unspoken rule and you know, I'm gonna, you're gonna grab me like this and I'm gonna do this and then you're gonna do that and I'm gonna flip you and you're gonna roll and we're pulling our punches. Even if you're doing more competitive, that's why I like boxing. That's why I like uh, Muay Thai. That's why I like Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I love Judo because you get thrown. There's no way to fake getting thrown, right? But especially, um, you, know, you have to learn how to roll, which is important. Learn how to roll. Hello, it's good to see you. Uh, but the nice thing about these, you can get a pair of padded sticks. You can get some smart gloves. Gloves, that means smart meaning like it's a good idea to wear them so you, don't, so you can still work the next day. And um, a helmet. You can even get a little bit of uh, gear here because no matter how many pads you, or how much padding you put on these, they, they still really hurt, the padded versions of these. And you can find those I put a link below. You can get all these different kinds of Scream Akali or knee sticks from the wood ones to the metal ones to the training ones. And then you get a partner and you've got training gear on. And your partner has training gear on and then you can see what works. And you might get into, you know, practicing. You're doing, you're ru running your sticks. Hey man, let's run sticks together. And you're both going to It looks super cool and super fun. And then you change, and you go up and down, and your guru is going, 
like looking all over the room like he's some kind of mystical, magical man. You know what I'm talking about. Some of you do. Some of you FMA guys know exactly what I'm talking about. And the guy's like, I can, I can look out the door the whole time while I'm doing my stuff. That's how good I am. But I'm not into that. I want to know, like, like, what does that feel like, right? And you take a hit and you learn how to get your hands up and guard your vital organs and guard your targets because they're coming after your targets. And you learn how to fight, not for real, because you're wearing pads, but more realistic when you do that. So let's get back to the strikes. You have angle one, angle two. Angle one, angle two on the other hand. Practice that one, two. As I said before, principle number four, all in. So you only do it nice and easy for about 30 seconds. And once you're sure you have your angles right, you're nice and tight, nice and tight, not out here, and not out here, but keeping it tight, then hard, fast, hard, like you're trying to end the fight because it's for self-defense and you do want to end the fight. Number four, commit to your strikes, right? And then the other side, nice and easy, nice and easy. Learn your distance, keep it tight. Oh, wow, it's different on the other arm, right? That's good to know. It's good to know here while we're training before I need it for real for street fight self-defense. And then hard and fast, hard, faster, harder, faster. Number three, third angle starts on the same side and comes to the other side, but your palm is facing up. From the bottom to the top, your palm is facing up because if it's not facing up and you bring it this way, it's gonna peel out of your hand. All that force pushes leverage and your hand just pops open. So you turn your palm up and you come up this way. And then the opposite of that, number five or number four, is from the opposite side to the same side coming through. But look at this. See that angle coming down? See the angle? Down, up. I always have this angle away from me. This is straight. Straight. If you're going straight, except for when you're coming on these horizontal strikes, everything else is always at this angle. You need this angle. That, that keeps the distance between you and the threat. But also, that protects your hands and the body's made up of all these angles, right? This angle, this angle, this angle. So you're gonna learn how to fight these angles coming in. And that's what this, uh, it's called Sinawali, which means a weaving pattern. What well, means weaving, but Sinawali is just a weaving pattern with your uh, doble baston, your two sticks. I don't even know if I said that right, but I'm guessing. I don't speak French yet. I will one day, if I live long enough, I'll speak every language I can learn. So from here, you do the Sinawali, and I wanna show you how to do that so that you have something to practice. But remember this, this is cool. This is fun. You can do it on a stack of tires, on a bag, on a pole, on a tree in the backyard, wrapped up with some um, padding. Get a whole bunch of uh, garbage bags, because they're everywhere, right? The plastic bags that give you at the grocery store, and um, tie them into ropes. And then wrap it, wrap it, wrap it, wrap it. Those things are full of air, they have nice squishiness. That'll protect your sticks and protect the, street, the tree. So now you practice. And remember that this practice, this is just a way to get you more reps to disguise repetition, to allow you to do a lot of strikes in a row during your workout, but it's not a substitute for self-defense coming all in when you do your strike. There's a little gummy there from that sticker. I don't know why they have to put the stickers on here. I know it's so they don't fall off, right? They get kind of gummy. A little bit of, uh, uh, what is that? Dish soap and some water, or just get used to it. I don't really care. Anyway, striking in your Sinawali pattern, I want you to start first with one idea. You're gonna cross your arms. That's the first idea, cross your arms. Angle one, angle one. Remember I said this is angle one on the right, this is angle one on the left, angle one, angle one. Cross your arms. Second idea, uncross your arms. Cross, cross, strike angle two. 
bring it back. Now you're uncrossed. Strike angle two, you're back in the beginning. One, two, three, four, good. You know what the nunchuck is? It's just a collie stick with a rope in the middle. From here, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the basic idea of the weaving. So you're here, one, two, three, four, and then you, next time, start with the other hand. Now, I'm right hand, left hand, right hand, left hand, then right hand, left hand. So I'm putting one hand on top and then the other hand on top, and now you're doing the basic Sinawali. That's all Sinawali is. Sinawali looks super complicated. It's really simple moves when you break them down. Anything simple moves, you break it into enough pieces. One, cross, one, uncross. One, two, three, four. Then go the other way. Go the other way, one side on top. And then I want you to start to turn your body a little bit so that you move around when you do your basic Sinawali. So you're just moving and constantly moving. Move one way, move back the other way, go a little faster, go a little slower, and then bend down a little bit, and then fight down here. It's all the same thing, it's just different angles. Bring the fight back to the middle, bring the fight up. Middle and down, and just move around a little bit. And you can do it on your tree or your stack of tires. Turning, middle, low, bring it back up, but test yourself, push yourself, get out of your comfort zone in order to grow. There's def different kinds of uh, Sinawali, different patterns. We can do down, just change it up. I can do a blocking motion. I can do high and low. I can do them coming out to the middle. And then start to Sinawali, but there's a lot of things you can do. You have to start with the basic patterns first. Work on the first four angles. Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. And like I said, once you're warmed up hard and fast, full commitment to every single strike. That's how you get started. With street fight self-defense, one of the best weapons is the Kali Arnis. A scream a stick, look at that, you can even spin it through your fingers. And then you cut it in half, put a rope in the middle, and you got a pair of chucks. You do all the same things with the chucks that you can do with the collie sticks, but the opposite isn't true. You can't do all the things with the collie sticks you can do with the chucks, because there's no string in the middle. Anyway, grab a pair if you need some, like I said. If you've got a partner, you get somebody you can train with, get a pair of the uh, padded sticks. Yeah, not yet. You will. Get some padded sticks. Then do, um, get some gloves. And if you play hockey, hockey gloves are the best gloves. If you look at the collie sticks, they're just hockey gloves. For the most part. Get a helmet. Covers your face, your eyeballs especially. Don't lose your eyesight learning how to fight with collie sticks. Even a padded collie stick that just glances your eyeball can cut that cornea. And then you get a little cut in there and you won't see right forever. So protect your eyes. Or stick a... Um, you know, get a pair of goggles, like work goggles. Be smart about it. Get some, uh, if you need to, some thigh pads from football, some shoulder pads. You know, that's what we used to do years and years and years ago before there was a martial arts padded industry. We made our own pads, right? That's how old I am. If you're wondering how old I am, I'm that old. But um, the point is, even if they, you, you don't want to spend all that money, you want to see if you like it first, make your own stuff. You need a pair of collie sticks, you don't want to spend 30, 40 bucks. Get an old broomstick, right? Cut the broom off, cut the broomstick in half, and then there you go, a pair of collie sticks. And they don't have to be, these are rattan. These are skin, these still have their skin. Some are peeled, some don't, are not skinned, some are burned. You'll see that if you look at the link below, all the different collie sticks you can get. But these are really durable until and almost every college, Kali Arni, Screamer School, all the Filipino martial arts schools you go in, people love doing this. Not to themselves, but with a partner. 
and they're hitting sticks, and it's so fun. I love doing it too. And it just like rips them up. Sinawali is not for fighting. You, you can, right? But Sinawali is disguising repetition. It's like the boxer, right? The boxer starts doing the footwork, and they get into the fight. They got to do the footwork. They got to go forward. They got to go side to side. And then, they, bam, they, th they throw those hands, right? In practice, they're skipping the rope, conditioning the body. When they get in the ring to fight the other guy or the other girl, they're not skipping the rope in the ring. They're doing their footwork. But they've conditioned their heart, their lungs, their legs with the jump rope. Sinawali's the jump rope. Just think of it that way. Three stick nunchucks. Hold on. Let me see if I know what you're talking about. I don't know if you heard that cascade of weapons come flying out of that bucket just now. These things, they tingle. This is what you're talking about? Three section staff. Look at that. That sure is menacing. Go walking down the street for street fight self-defense with that thing. And let me tell you the truth. About three section staff that only someone who's used it a lot could possibly know of all the weapons you will ever practice with all of them you're gonna hit yourself the most and this is the uh, white wax wood it's hard you're gonna hit yourself the most with these but and there's not a whole bunch of things you can do with them there are but they're not obvious and you have to get really good uh, and then the faster you move the more it turns into one big long staff you just got to keep it moving and then it's really good oh Yes, um, thank you, I agree. Uh, but that's what that is. Is that what you're talking about? The three-piece nunchuck? It's called a uh, three-section staff, is what we've, we've always called it. See these in some of the kung fu movies? And they're really good, good, or fun to train with, but it's like, um, like a rope dart. I don't have a rope dart yet, or right now. I, uh, all, my, I left those in Ohio for some reason. But like the rope, rope dart and the, the chain, um, the ball and the sickle, those things are f so cool. Like the, uh, uh, you see them in ninja movies, some kung fu movies. It's like a samurai old supposedly weapon. And they're super cool. Rope darts uh, and the fan. Where's the fan? Hold on, I need the fan. I don't know what I'd do with the fan. I was going to do the Kung Fu fan. I'll find it and I'll do it. Because you guys keep asking me, can you do the Kung Fu fan? But, and they're really cool. Kung Fu fan actually, in my opinion, is more like a Kali stick or a, a, like a shorter version. Because you hold it the same way. You have that little punak or that little piece coming out the bottom. And you can trap with it. And then you pop it open. And it has those hard spines made out of bamboo usually. Or they can be metal in some of them in the Kung Fu movie uh, and, the, and the ninja movies. Uh, what was his name? Shinobi. They have like the sharpened points. And they st throw them, stick them, and stab them. But they also, it's just a stick. Any kind of stick you can use. One of the best things, like if you find yourself in a situation, right? We think of this all the time as martial arts. When uh, poo hits the fan, when, when shit hits the fan. And you're thinking like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? The guy's got a knife. You take the magazine. You take an Oprah magazine because they're always thick. They're like the right thickness. I don't know why. Maybe the Oprah magazine is wet, uh, laying around the house or real simple. I got all the women magazines in my house. Guns and Ammo. There you go. Or uh, Outdoors magazine. You, wrap, you roll it. It's super tight. And then you hold it with a tight grip. And you have a little bit here. Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Those are really cool and fun. They're not hard. They're not really. They are hard to master because you have to expect to hit yourself for a while until you don't hit yourself anymore. And um, it feels like you're gonna kill yourself, but you're not. It's usually like a glancing blow and it does hurt all the, but not all the time. Uh, but it's more like frightening, right? Because you're not used to things flying around your face. But it's so good for uh, spatial awareness, to learn where your body exists in space and time. That's one of the goals, one of the keys, one of the great benefits of martial arts. 
but you have this Oprah magazine. You have a little sticking out, and you have the long one here, and then the guy's got a knife, and it's either your skin or the Oprah magazine. Now you can block, you smash him, you smash him right in the face before he closes the distance and stabs you with his knife. Yeah, I was talking about a bladed fan earlier, or even the, um, any of the wooden fans. They all work the same. Once, when, when it's closed and you're squeezing it hard with your powerful grip that you got from your Indian clubs and your kettlebells and your battle ropes, then you take that uh, fan, bam, and it works just like a stick. And if you had a stick this long, which is what the fan is, if you have a stick this or a magazine rolled up, that's better than nothing against somebody who might have a knife, right? And if you realize, oh, I'm in big trouble. I think that guy's got a knife. I don't have anything to defend myself. I can't conceal carry my way out of it. Then you look around and you say, water bottle, water bottle, that's better than nothing. Because a water bottle, again, you hold it tight, you know, one of those thin, long water bottles, that's, that's better than uh, your skin. Or you find uh, that magazine or newspaper, you roll it up really tight, magazine's best because of the spine in the back. Or you pick up a stick. And then that, here's, here's your homework assignment, all right? Talk about situation awareness, that's every homework, every single day. Walk around, pay attention to what's happening around you. Number two, think about what you would do wherever you go tomorrow, maybe the rest of today, tonight, tomorrow, Everywhere you are, imagine it's when you're out, like if you're in your house or your apartment or wherever, you're in your room, you think about someone bust through that door right now and they got a knife. What do I have here that I can turn into a short stick? Either by rolling it or I just pick it up because it's already stick. Maybe it's the remote control. You got one of those big old remote controls to the TV. You're sitting there, jewel coming out of your face, eating your Cheetos. But think of it. And then you're driving in your car or you're on the bus, or you're on the train, or you're walking down the street. And then you look around and you say, okay, right now someone pops out, he's got a knife. I have nothing. What's in my, my backpack? What's in my purse or my bag? What's in my pockets, right? Your phone, your phone's better than nothing. How are you gonna use your phone? But start to get into that kind of thought where you're like thinking these things through and think about how do you turn yourself into a weapon? How do you weaponize for self-defense? these things that are around you so that when shit hits the fan, you're prepared and you don't have to panic. Everybody says, uh, thinks about like the fight or flight principle, right? They say when, when, when things go down, you're stressed and you're worried and you're afraid and you're gonna either run or fight. That's not always true. The third one, which is the most uh, common eventually, but not until you hit them a couple times with it, the one that's most common is freeze. And it's not, you know, the, they say active shooter, run, hide, fight. It, it, that's not hide. It's freeze. And so all, all of a sudden, the guy comes busting through the door, and you're like, because you're in shock. It's normal. That's a normal response. But not you, because you're training. You're preparing. So if you prepare, then you won't panic. You, you, you prepared for this, even in your imagination. Somebody kicks in the door of your, your room. He's got a knife. It's Jason from uh, Halloween or whatever. And you're all, you just look around. Yeah, if you had one. <laughs> if you have one in your room, that's great, man. You know, what do you have that you're going to defend yourself with? You're in your car. You're on the bus. You're on the train. You're walking on the street. Um, you're at school. You're in your office. You're in the grocery store. You're in the bodega. You're wherever. The gas station, pumping gas. Just tomorrow, to, either today and tomorrow or both days, that's your assignment. Look around and think about how could you weaponize the things around you to defend yourself if you had to. And remember this, if the guy's coming at you like this, don't wait for him to get close. Smash him in the face. If you can hit first, hit first. You can find all the reasons that it won't work. And you would get an A plus on all those reasons. Or you can focus on one reason why it would. And your mind is able to imagine good scenarios and bad scenarios. It's just imagination. And so if you have control over it, stop thinking of all the reasons that you're going to die, that things are going to break, that it's not going to work, and start thinking about how you're the superhero. You're the hero of this story. You're the antagonist. You're the guy that comes out or the girl, and then the news follows you around for a week doing interviews because they say the nasty bad guys came at this kid and he picked up his phone and he disarmed six of them, got the seventh one in the throat because he had no other choice.
The guy died on the platform, train platform, the Antifa. And you defended him with just your phone. If you can imagine that, imagine that, and stop imagining all these silly little ideas of what's not gonna work. And I'm talking to you. And you know that I'm talking to you. You know I'm talking to him. I'm talking to myself too. But that's how your brain works. Stop thinking about everything that goes wrong and make yourself the hero in every single story. If you're gonna imagine it anyway, imagine the best. And then what you think about comes true. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much for watching.